Wyoming Senator Cynthia Lummis. She is the co-chair of the Financial Innovation Caucus. Senator, great to have you with us. Good morning. Thanks for having me. Are you still hopeful that the language in, in the bill will actually change in the House? I hope it will become law either in the House or later this year in the Senate. It is not going to be part of the bill that we will be voting on today. What happens if the language remains so that it's more far-reaching than you would like to see? If that happens, we will be watching Treasury very carefully to make sure that they narrowly craft the rules and regula regulations around the definition a broker. Uh, that became the issue. They were trying to define broker in a way that would catch people within the cryptocurrency world that don't have information that's helpful to the IRS uh, and could put them in a very difficult place. I think it expressed uh, a fundamental misunderstanding of how digital assets uh, are built and uh, are placed on the blockchain. So we've got a lot of education to do in Washington. Mm -hmm. And certainly in Wyoming, I mean, Wyoming has vied for a while to be a crypto capital in the United States. I believe that as of June, there are about 48 LLCs registered in Wyoming with the term Bitcoin in them. Um, you've got Kraken and some others partially setting up shop in Wyoming. So I'm curious, Senator, how you see, I mean, if, if the original language went in and it was a far-reaching definition of broker, how does that play out actually in the industry? How do you, does it impact the crypto uh, industry in Wyoming? It could hit uh, people all over the country mm -hmm. uh, and indeed all over the world who are doing business in the United States. Uh, for example, it could hit miners, it could hit validators, it could hit people who prepare software and hardware uh, for digital wallets, personal digital wallets. People who are not in uh, the business of being a broker, but rather are part of the decentralized peer-to-peer -peer transactions that frequently occur with regard to digital assets. Uh, so we worked very hard uh, with Treasury. Uh, it was bipartisan. I want to really thank uh, Senator Ron Wyden, uh, Senator Pat Toomey, uh, as well as the sponsors of the bill that we've been working with. That would be uh, Senator Portman and Senator Sinema. Finally, we did reach language that Treasury was comfortable with. Uh, it was a compromise, uh, but uh, it was rejected because, as you know, uh, any senator can object, uh, and we've had a lot of back and forth going on between people who want to run out the clock here and extend debate and those who want to shorten debate. Uh, and because of all of the back and forth, uh, this amendment uh, fell on the cutting room floor yesterday. Are you, um, you know, you, you've been sort of at the forefront of crypto in your state uh, because of what it wants to be in the crypto industry. But I'm curious if, if you think that you're colleagues, uh, either in the Senate or in the House, do, is everybody sort of um, at that point in terms of education to be legislating on crypto in your view? I mean, is there, there is a perception in the industry amongst industry leaders, at least, that perhaps Congress isn't informed enough about the blockchain, for instance, and about issues of crypto to actually be legislating on, on the issue? I agree with the leaders in the industry. Uh, the Senate is not ready. Most members are not familiar with digital assets and how they even come to be. But the silver lining behind working on this amendment for the last week or so has been that now members are getting more aware of how significant this industry is. And I want to thank people within uh, the digital asset community for contacting their senators and beginning to weigh in with them. And their senators heard them loud and clear. What they heard is this is a substantial community and a growing community all over the country in every state and that their senators need to learn about this asset and pay more attention to these people because they're constituents that are paying attention and need to learn uh, from their constituents and from each other about this asset. That's definitely been the advantage of having this debate, even though we were ultimately unsuccessful in getting the amendment 
attached to the bill. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.